Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the Rizu Forest. That one's... Oh! I can put this in the middle of the hedge. Now that is excellent, that's what I'd like to do. So I'm going to put one here. Didn't mean to put that one there actually, so let me just remove that one. I think I can. Yes. Right, I can remove that one. So then we can put this one back. Okay, so I'm actually going to try and... I could put lights up on top of those posts, which means that we're going to want shorter lights to do that. Because otherwise it's not going to look right. Zoom in a little bit and see if we can get this right. How does that look? It doesn't actually look too bad. If I do this every few posts. Okay, leave two. Put one in. Leave two. Put one in. And there. Like that. So these aren't floodlights. Not by any stretch of the imagination. But we don't need to have floodlights everywhere. There's nothing wrong with, you know, nighttime being dark. One and that one there. And then I kinda want something at the end. Just to mark it as the end. This one is... This one would look so much better, actually. I'll put that one there on the end. There. That one's quite bright compared to the others. Uh, this one's actually also the one that is going to go on some of these bits. So we'll put this one out here and have a light there. I'll have a light there. This side has got plenty of light already, I think. This one here. Actually, I'm not going to put one in there. I guess maybe we could put something around the edge on this one. I'm not going to do that now, though. I've done enough. That's that's enough. We, we've got we've got the lights. Oh, what? Hmm. See that there? Spot the deliberate mistake. Let me just correct that a minute. I can't leave that like that. That's that's awful. I figured as I had to go and delete most of them anyway, I'll delete all of them and I'll change it and I'll put those in. And I'm pleased with those results. I actually, I prefer that. That looks really good. I like that. So we'll leave that right there. That is our um, furniture factory all done. We got that nice line all the way down through. The I was thinking the hedge didn't line up, but it does actually. I've got that fairly well lined up. It's slight. Slightly outlined just on the side there, but generally speaking, I think that's pretty good. And the lights all the way down through. I think that looks good. I like that. And pleased with that little bit of work right there. I think that looks very nice. And it, it's got enough light on it as well. I think that's I think that's enough. I removed two of the, the big lights up here. Well, I'm, actually, no. I just removed the one on the corner, didn't I? Did I remove two? No, I only moved one. I, I removed the one over on the corner over there. I left the ones out there so that they're lighting up the road out this side. But I removed one on the inside so that we've just got those lights down there. And I think that's absolutely fine. So let's go into you and turn your lights off. And then we want to go over here and we're going to want to sleep the night. And I'm thinking I will probably change those. I'm I'm thinking that those are going to be changed soon because I think those lights are a little bit too excessive. We'll see what the furniture price is in the morning. See whether that does actually go up or not. 
I'm hoping it doesn't. 6723. Now it's gone down a little bit. So it's actually not changed all that much. We're doing 6781, it says there. I think we've got a bit more than that. I can't actually remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, so we have 625,000 euros. Now I would like to get some more housing. And I'm thinking it would probably go with like a block of flats or something like that for housing. This tractor right here, it has been pointed out that this one is not on the largest engine size that we can get. So we will bring this one over here. And we will go over to this one and customize this one. Repaint, repaint for 48 thousand euros i'm not gonna do that just yet so we'll go in there so engine setup t8 350 genesis 380 is extra fifteen thousand. so what do we got at the moment we're on a 351 that's 381 409 for 410 for 435 so it goes up to a 435 horsepower engine with an extra 42 grand so we will take that Customization, yes, thank you very much. Okay, and we'll also do some repair work as well for 8,000. So now we have an altogether more powerful vehicle. The next thing I want to do is I want to go into the shop and I want to get that new mower that I was talking about. Mowers. And it's this one here. I want to try this one. I've never used this one before. I think it does look really cool. We will give it the maximum speed boost available, which is 32k. Uh, so buy that one. There's no other options on that one. And then I want to go this one. So we've got work mode. We will have the collector on that one. And then this will go up to 32k as well. Right there. And that's the farming simulator. Type. All right, well, we'll just leave that one. Yeah, we'll just say okay. Right, that's fine. We'll just go with that. Uh, buy. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to want to get those other mowers in the shed and bring them over here so that we can sell them. If you actually take them to the shop, obviously, you get more money. So we want to do that. I'm really excited to try out these giant mowers. That's next month, July. We get uh, not July, June, uh, August. I'll get there eventually. August is when we want to try those out. So let's bring you out round here. We haven't got a lot of equipment yet. I've got this one shed here as well. So building another shed is something that we want to do. Now, the big expansion. I mean, we we we've got the cows. We've got one shed for the cows at the moment, and we're sort of getting started on that. But what are we going to do next? Like, do I just focus on expanding out the cows, or do I start sort of working on some arable stuff as well? I'm thinking going for the arable stuff as well is is kind of the way forward. So, right here, I want to repair. Yep, and also repaint and use well repair yep and repaint because you get more money if you sell like that so then we go here so sell that one for nine thousand and that one sell for fifty thousand two hundred and sixty one okay that leaves me with four hundred and thirty seven thousand it's not too bad it's not too bad let's clean this one there we go always nice to have a clean and shiny tractor Ooh, I know what I can do. Actually, let's not use this one to do it. Let's go to this one. I want to have a quick look and see what is growing around the edge of the field because obviously we've got the new plant growth coming through. Where we did that cutting, where it went out around the edges. What have we got? Let's go and have a look. Got a little Kubota. So there you've got, you know, fresh grass growth coming up through we had previously um there were some weeds and that in there Let's see actually there might be more weeds coming through i'm not entirely sure but it's over this way downside here where we cut and this is the bit is this strip down through and this is growing fresh grass instead now 
So it does actually turn it into meadow grass. Anywhere that there was plants or anything like that that we cut, it's now turned it into meadow grass. That's pretty cool. I like that. We've got the wet patch there in the corner. Yeah, I like that. That's, that's actually pretty good. Uh, let's bring you in on the ramp here, shall we? And we'll go down that way. We'll park you back over next to the house. It's not very fast, this one. I think we could do something a little bit quicker than this one. Move back in there like that. And stop. Okay. Uh, mowers, I want to put them... I'm not going to worry about putting them away in the shed for now. I'm going to be using them very soon anyway, so I think they're absolutely fine where they are. Uh, you need to be on at least five times speed like that. Uh, what have we got in here? Let's just take a look at the cows and see what they're up to. Yeah, we don't have to worry about them. They're absolutely fine. So it'll be September when we need to do anything more to these. Don't need to deal with them now. Uh, building. Right, so I was... It's new field, new field for doing arable cropping. Now, where are we going to do arable fields? If, if we're going to start branching out into arable fields. So we've, we've got a whole load of land at the moment, right? We've, we've already got a whole load of land. We've got, this is our field right here. We've gone and bought up this huge, great big area of forest here. We haven't really done anything with it. I've got some houses just along here. And they all sort of go out into this bit. So the next houses that we build will be going up this way towards field 19. I've got this field. And I'm going to sort of try and bring out this corner here. I was talking about squaring this field up a bit. It's going to be this corner here that we square up. Because uh, that goes against the road there. And then heads down. Which way was I thinking of doing it before? Oh no, that's the road that goes, yes it is, it's, it's down here that I want to bring this bit out. So we sort of square this piece out here, take a chunk out there, and then I've got my shed up that way. Uh, field 13, could be one to buy. We've got 17, this is where the industrial stuff is happening, so they're sort of coming down here, our industrial stuff, and then our housing is over here, and selling points. Now I've got one sell point over here. And I'm wondering whether I should put more cell points up that side or whether the cell points should go here in between houses and industrial. And I think in between houses and industrial would be better. That does kind of make more sense. Uh, very often with real life towns, that's kind of what you end up having. You sort of have a blend houses and then you go to the shops and then beyond the shops, then you go more towards the industrial. The industrial is generally kept as further away from residential so that would make a lot of sense to do that because the you know the industrial gets quite noisy and you don't want that close to the residential areas so this bit in here like we've got some factory stuff here that's sort of going to be heading down this way and then shopping area will be over here so i've got one main shop here that we use and then we'll build new shopping areas over here and we'll sort of probably start using those more because we haven't got so far to carry it rather than using that over there. Um, which means if I want to expand and start doing some arable work, I can't go this way because that's housing. And I can't go down here because this is where the industrial... So this area here is sort of taken up now. A little bit more there I can do with the grass, but that's going to be about it. And then we'll leave a barrier of trees in between there and the industrial. So we have got a little bit of separation between them. Which And then I've got my main farm is actually under that bit there. So I'd say we do want to buy field 13. Yes, I want to buy that one. And it's, do I want to go this way with arable and start expanding down over there? You know, I don't even know what that bit is over there. This bit up here is, it looks quite weird and also cool up there. I'm kind of wondering whether we should do anything with that up there. I, I don't know if we get that far. I don't want to be going too far away from our farm. I'm sort of thinking like these bits here could end up being industrial to do the the industry although that's sort of heading down that way so i mean maybe we could get this bit and start our arable coming down this way and we get field 15 as well what have i got i got three hundred eighty-four thousand. 
Hmm. That one is 208. Decisions, decisions. I haven't got anywhere to go and sell logs. All I can do is turn them into furniture. I mean, maybe we can buy a log sell point at some point, but I don't think we'll need to... I don't think we'll do that. That's not something that we'll end up doing. Um... Alright, I've thought about this a little bit. We've got grass here. I've got a little bit of grass over there, but that'll eventually be turned, that'll be developed, that land. Um, so I've got grass right here. And then as we expand, I might put more grass meadow over this way. So really, I'll want my arable to be going up in this direction. So that's where we're going to start with our arable. And then I kind of like, I'll, I'll head up around here for arable land. I don't know how quick we can open that up or not. But I'm going to buy that one right there. And we'll go and take a look. So I've got 95,000 left at the moment, which is not massive amounts, but it's enough to keep us out of mischief for a day or two. And we'll then go into landscaping like this. So there's our track that comes out of our cattle yard and off of the main farm. And it comes down here onto this bit. Now, there's a couple of signs and stuff there. And then we've got a footpath. Now, this footpath here goes on up that way it splits off here and goes up through here i can't remember one of these goes to the sawmill yeah there's the sawmill right there so that one eventually makes its way to the sawmill past uh 15 and 16. now those are just arable crop fields at the moment by other people that own them and we're not going to worry about them so this bit here, I'm not going to be wanting to develop that. So I'm probably not going to end up buying those fields up that way. Our stuff is heading down this direction. So I've now got field 13, which at the moment is grass. So I might do something. I probably will turn that one. We'll mow that one as well. So we're going to want to be able to have a track that comes out of that one and that comes in here. So that we've then got something there. I'm not going to landscape that at the moment. I'm going to leave that. Um, it's the new bit that I've got out this side. This is the bit that we need to look at. And I need to just sort of see. So we've got field 7 right there. Go to farmland. We're basically going up beside field 7. Between 7 and 1 is where we're heading. So it's going to there. Go back to construction. And we can whiz down here. So you've got field 7 right here and then you go over this way and it unlocks uh, unlocks it it goes it uncovers field one over this side now those are both ones that we'll end up buying i think and you've got this footpath along here now the footpath is something that we need to leave as it is we don't want to be changing that one around because we've got people that walk along that footpath so there's kind of like a, a, a road essentially so we're not going to do anything to change that Except maybe have a crossing point with what we build. But it's this area in between that we can start turning into some arable land. And I'm not going to develop this into a track. Because, as I said, there's people walking along. You can see a dude right there. He's, he's going for a walk. We don't want to be interfering with that. That's, that's not, not the done thing. So what we do want to do, though, is we want to build a line that will come down through there and get to about this point and then we can start opening this up for arable farming plus this field as well now that's all sunflowers right now field seven right there if i go to farmland field seven is ninety thousand. so i can buy that one and i won't have anything left over i'm not going to because i don't want to harvest sunflowers and i don't want to have to deal with that just at a minute do want to build a road up through there so we're going to want something to mark out where we're going to, you know i'm just going to use the landscaping to mark that out so if we go in here and i go to painting i basically want a straight line to go from here and it's just going to go up through here like this going to go up to there and I want a line that's just going to go through these trees down to about there so if I can find that 
I can do this. Right, we'll go with concrete. Actually, I'm not even sure that concrete is going to paint over it. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it blend in a little bit better. We'll do the cracked earth version. Right. It doesn't need to be a straight line. Just kind of a little bit straight there. Okay. That'll do. I don't need to do any more than that. I've got little bits of cracked earth going down through there that I'll be able to see where we're going as we head down through it. So the next task that we're going to want to do then is a little bit of tree harvesting. And I'm actually going to use a tree harvester to do some of this. I also want to square this field off. So while we're here, and I'm thinking about this bit, let's do that with this one. So I kind of need to see where that's going to be squared off. So I'm coming up. There's going to be the edge. And then that will come up to here. So there's the corner. So we go to painting. Again, we use the cracked earth because I quite like this as a marker. I like this texture. I've not seen this texture before anywhere. Um, let me change that to a circle. Make it a bit bigger. There, so we can actually see it. And so that one's going to go basically out here, I think. Go out a bit more. And I see where that's going. So that one is pretty much where that tree is, I think. Let's do a line there. So that goes up there. And that will go to that bit. And it will sort of come out over there as well. So, I mean, we can... We can see where that's going. That one... Right, that's, that's, that's roughly it. So that will come out about there, I think. And then you go up through here. Right, it may not be exactly straight, but that's, that's roughly where we're going to take the edge of this one. I'll do something about the cracked earth texture in a bit. Well, in a bit, once we've removed any trees that we want to remove from here. That's going to be roughly the edge of the field all the way through there. And then we'll do the same over here. We'll bring that one through. So I'm not going to like do a, a sharp corner or anything like that. I think that's just going to look weird. Um, we'll just do a, a nice gentle curving edge. I'll probably have a straight edge along there because that's already a straight edge. So an extra straight edge would be good. I'm not going to do that at the moment. Are you? Oh, you don't turn, do you? We've got to go and do this bit. We're going to go over to the arable bit. Seasonal growth, crop, dirt. No, it's in here. Du, 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 du. Easy arm controls off and on. There we go. Right. Just don't get out of the vehicle and it'll stay on the easy arm controls. So I'm going to take this one over to the other bit and we're going to start cutting some trees down there where we can sort of start making our track out towards the area where we will start our arable enterprise and then we'll come back later on and we can do a bit more landscaping around the yard here as we add in some extra tracks and stuff because we've now got another field over there that we're going to want to be able to get to and I don't want to just sort of leave that one as it is I've got a bit there that might need landscaping I'm not sure about that it's a bit of a dip in there Obviously, the way the landscaping works, if there's a dip, it doesn't do anything about it. So there's our marker. I want to jump out now and go do some, uh, remove some of these. Like those two there, I definitely want to remove. Let's start you up. Do these in. Okay, let's let's just do a little bit here, shall we? Having the e I, it's taken a little bit, let's say it's taken a while to get used to the easy arm controls. He says levering his thing off the ground, proving that he's still not entirely used to it. But 
These easy arm controls, I recommend them. Right, they are easier than I thought they would be to get used to. Right, they, they are actually pretty good. It does make life a little bit easier. I've got this on a joystick. Unfortunately, though, because I'm on a hill, it doesn't seem to like it. Oh, there we go. Right, it has grabbed it now. Being on the side of a hill, it doesn't seem to like that. But the easy arm controls, if you've not used them before, if if you have a joy... I mean, I, I don't know what they're like with a mouse, but I've got a joystick. So um, it, it's definitely a good thing with a joystick. It, it does make life nice and simple when you've got the joystick using it. And chop these off. I think there are some mods that allow you to cut the timber into 12 meter lengths rather than 8 meter lengths. And I think if we were to get the bigger trailer in there, in here, just quick look, the forestry equipment, because we've got, which one have we got? Oh, we've got the biggest one. That's 20 meters. Uh, no, if you did that at 12 meters. So you could do like one load at 12 meters in that one. This one here, I mean, I guess if we increase them to nine meters, we'd probably still be all right. But eight meters on that. Yeah, that, you know what? We, we don't need to worry about it. Um... This is a base game machine that we're using here, so it's not going to make any difference to that one. Won't change anything. Uh, you will go to this tree down here. Again, on a hill, it does make it a bit more tricky. But it still works. He says. Getting it to fully line up is not always the easiest thing. But that's more getting it to line up with the tree than anything else. There we go. See? Trying to get it to just line up right with the tree. That's, that's sometimes the trickiest part. Yeah, let's just do that one over there. And... Are you twisting me? Oh, yeah, you are. You, you've levered up against another tree, which doesn't help matters. That always makes things a little bit a little bit more awkward. I'm, I don't know how many of these I'm going to do using the tree harvester. I know that some of you like to see me using the tree harvester a bit, but... You, um... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.